Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, when you're dealing with software developers, always get more than one quote. All right, so I was planning on doing this video outside today. I wanted to go out, drive around a little bit, put together a nice little montage of driving, talking, put some music to it. Man, that's like a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing the editing sometimes, but I've been stuck in the office for most of the week. Oh, I've been stuck in the office and I've been visiting client sites and I've got like loads of work to do, not development work, but I have to write uh, a, a couple of proposals and for me writing a proposal is like it's like doing homework in school like everything else is more fun than that right I'm like okay it's time to work on this proposal hey what's this over here right I'm just it like and so this weekend I'm gonna have to sit down I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna work on these proposals and writing a proposal or writing a quote is a lot more difficult than it might seem to people who haven't done it before because you have to write the software in your head think about how long it's gonna take to do all the different components and then come up with a cost for it and you can't just come up with a cost for it because you kind of have to show your work so i'll do flow charts and diagrams and wireframes and everything and put it into a document and, and present it in a way well enough that they can look at it and say okay yes we want to go ahead go forward with this project and quotes are difficult because they could the price if the price is too high you lose the job obviously if the price is too low and you get the job, then that's even worse. If you've ever worked on a project that you've underquoted on, you know what I mean. It's like not fun at all. So you want to put the time and effort into doing the quotes. And somebody even suggested to me earlier this week, maybe you should start charging for the quotes. And I thought, yeah, maybe. I have to think about how that would work. I'm kind of like running that over my head, you know, charging for that initial analysis for the quotes. Uh, and somebody else was saying, how do you know that somebody's not going to take your quote and go to another developer? And that's just one of the risks that you take, right? If you do a quote for somebody, and especially if it's detailed, thinking about what, what it is to do, they could always take it and go to another developer. And in a way, I kind of expect them to. I kind of expect that. And I know when I've worked with other people, they got really angry about it. And I'm just like, dude, that's just the way it is. So much of what you do when you run a company is you do a lot of work that you don't actually get paid for. I've done, I've done a few quote, quite a few quotes in the past where you, you put up like a half a day or even just a few hours, sometimes even a whole day into it and you don't get the job or you'll, you'll put it, give it off to them and then they, they decide that, oh, they're going to hold off on it for now or they want to go get funding or whatever. And that's just part of the thing. So another part of the proposal is you're thinking, I don't want to put too much work into this in case it doesn't go forward, but I don't want to put not enough into it because it needs that kind of analysis, right? Now, what I, I kind of encourage every client that we have that they should talk to other developers. And I know that sounds strange, but I encourage anybody because a lot of times they'll come to us because they found one of the videos, they found us through the website, and your first role as a software developer, if they come to you, is you're supposed to guide them through the process. And sometimes to guide them through the process, you think, I'm going to tell them to do what I would do in their situation. And I would, what I would do is I would talk to more than one developer and get more than one quote. Now, a lot of people who are not in software are they don't realize how different a quote from one developer could be from another developer like they might think okay a good developer would be like 20 percent faster than a bad developer or 50 percent faster or maybe a good developer would be twice as fast as a normal developer or twice as expensive or whatever right and a lot of times they have no idea now if you work in software you probably know what this is like you work with some software developers who take 10 times longer than you, 50 times longer than you. And some of them are just speedy and very quick. And we're all good programmers and bad programmers depending on the language and the situations that we're in. So I wanted to tell you a few stories about some things that I've had in the past that kind of demonstrate this. The first one was like, I was working at an investment bank in London and we had this new team in India, which I was kind of managing at the time. And you know, where they were my team, the, I was the lead developer. There was another manager, I was the lead developer. So I was kind of responsible for everything that was technical, that side of things. So 
I, I had to give him this one developer, his name was Mukund, and I had to give him a task. So I gave him, I asked him to write a store procedure in SQL Server. And the store procedure was very simple. It was like, okay, so when you pass in an ID, I want you to delete the records from this table over here, this table over here, insert, uh, insert another record into this one, and then also, it was like, a, like three or four tasks of it, right? And so he says, okay, okay, got it, right? And he, and he went off, and the next day I checked with him to say, Hey, how's it going with that store procedure? I said, oh, I'm still working on it. And I'm thinking, okay, well, it's, you know, it's, he's new. He's, we all start somewhere. We have to learn. And then the second day, how's it going? Oh, no, I had another thing I needed to work on. And then, and then like three, you know, and then three, four days later, and I just forgot about it until I was chased about it, right? 10 days, and then so the person he said he was doing another project for, I went and asked them, and they said, actually, no, that, you know, he finished that in like 20 minutes. So like the only thing he had to work on was this one store procedure. And 10 days later, I chased him about it. I said, where are we with this store procedure? And he still hadn't finished it yet, right? It was, he, and so but he showed me what he had done and he wasn't doing a store procedure. He was actually writing a whole different program. Like it was, and it was just, he wasn't quite sure what to do and he didn't want to tell me he didn't he wanted to impress me i think and it was just it was like really it was really bad so i sat down and we did a screen share and i wrote the store procedure with him actually i wrote it he watched uh and it took me like an hour it took me an hour to do it and it was like so we're looking at 10 days versus one hour. I mean, that's very extreme. If you, and a lot of times when I tell people that, they think, oh, he must have been really terrible. It's like, no, he was inexperienced. He wasn't used to SQL Server. He was better at other things. You know, there was another time uh, working at a different investment bank where I was called to just do a bit of troubleshooting on something. It was an access database because at the time I was kind of like a Microsoft access guy. And they called me down to, to, to this one team. It was like a it was a risks department, risk department, I think. And they called me down and said, they've got this access database that they think is corrupted. Can you go have a look and see if there's anything that you could do? And I went down and looked at it and surely it was like um, they could go from record to record, but they couldn't update anything in the, in the access database. So I had a look at it and I, and I saw that it was using link tables. So if you're familiar with access, you could have a back end and a front end or everything could just be combined, but they had it as a back end and a front end. And I looked at it and I noticed at the top it said, um, you know, uh, 97 protected mode, Windows or Microsoft Office 97 protected mode, right? So I looked at it and then I looked at the back end database and I seen that that had been upgraded to Office 2000. I think yeah, this was a long time ago. It was upgraded to Office 2000, so the front end just had to be upgraded. So I just went into the conversion tool, made a copy of it, made a, went into the conversion tool, and said, there you go, it's all working, right? It's like, it took like, like 20 minutes tops. And the guy looked at me and said, We've had four different developers down here looking at that and the last developer told us that they would have to rewrite the whole thing and it would take them like three to four months to troubleshoot it. And I'm like, and it made me feel really cool at the time. It was like 10 minutes versus three to four months. That's a huge difference. But the truth is I knew the problem. I was familiar with access. Like I was just able to go in and, and see what it was. It, did, it was misdiagnosed by somebody else, right? Now, I'm not always a good guy in these stories, too. There's been times in the past where I, we did a, I was working for a consultancy and we had to give a quote on like a WordPress application. So, um, so the, the consultancy had a client that came in and they, it was like, Eric, we need you to quote on this. So I went through the whole thing and I was giving quotes and I was like, I went through, and I gave all these man days and everything. And I think our quote, the company's quote to the client was 11,000 pounds, right? And it was, I mean, it was, it was a fairly major uh, and they so they went to the client and the client turned down the job and they came back to us saying they went with another firm in London that could do it for eight thousand pounds and uh, I remember the manager or the uh, the owner of the company coming to me because Eric, I just don't understand it. How could, I don't know how anybody could have done that for eight thousand pounds and we did eleven thousand pounds and I was like in my mind I'm thinking they probably use WordPress every single day and I was like I was really a .NET developer, right? I was like, I was, and I kept telling them that, but I was like, okay, well, so I gave the quote, and it's like, so the skills are different. Like, if you're gonna hire a software developer, to anybody out there who's gonna hire a software developer, if it's gonna be us or anybody else, always talk to more than, more than one developer, right? You have huge discrepancies between them. And I tell, them, I tell clients this too, a lot of times they won't do it, but I say, 
Like if they if if I give them a quote and they go, ooh, that seems a bit steep, right? Which is what I want to hear. Last thing I want to hear is, oh, that's very reasonable. Because I, I like so um so if they say, oh, that seems a bit steep, I say, you know what? I would encourage you to talk to some other developers and just get a get an idea for how much something like this would cost. Because if you go to another developer and they quote you a lot more, that makes makes us look really good. And if they quote you if they quote you less and you think they can do it and you get along really well with them go with them it's fine right or you know tell me what who they are and I'll, we'll subcontract out to them that you know uh, but um anyway for those guys out there who are software developers do you have any experiences like that where you have differences between one developer and another developer where we're not talking about one's just slightly slower one's slightly faster we're talking about huge orders of magnitude where where one job is somebody could do it in a super short amount of time so we take a long a, a very long amount of time because uh, i see it all the time right software development is you know there's the thing about software is that you're creating something from nothing and there's always more i mean there's so many different ways to accomplish something and somebody who does it every single day can do it like that. Look at something like unit tests. Every time I talk to a developer about unit tests, they say, oh, it slows us down, it doubles the, the speed of the uh, development. But if you talk to somebody who does unit tests every day, it's nothing to them. They're just like in, out, in, out. Right, it's always finding the right developer. So my advice today, for the, let me, leave me a quote if you know, uh, leave me a comment if you know of any situations like that. My advice today is if you're looking to get a software development, software development done, always get quotes from more than one developer. Anyway, that is it for today. I gotta get back to these proposals. I will talk to you guys again next time.